And so what do you think about, like, so, like, the New Yorker yesterday or a couple days ago yeah. started their, um, their iPad service and people seem to like it and there's other things like the daily which seem to have had less success yeah and so there's a lot of experimentation going like new york times switched to a paywall yeah um i'm not it's, i find personally find their plan so i mean I'm a, I'm a reader of the new york times i find they have like 18 layers of <laughs> sort of <laughs> i can't right. figure out the pricing right. model right um it seems like there's just a lot of experimentation and maybe yes. confusion like what's your vision for how this mm -hmm. like how this will end up shaking out mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't think it would be surprising to say that, you know, I'm an optimist on this. I think that the world of publishing is going to come out of this state. Uh, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that have been good that have already started to happen and a lot more to come. We, and we were only about a year into the iPad itself. And I don't, well, I don't think the iPad is necessarily, you know, you know quote unquote, the savior of media. Me, you know, media has to be the savior of media. But I think the iPad and HTML5 and social media are all super powerful trends that they can leverage to, um, to create a new kind of media experience. And that harkens back in, to the sort of the, the, the high quality aesthetic that they have in print, um, but, but is also still you know, digital. And there's, this is a journey that everyone is on. They're trying to figure it out. And everybody has different approaches. You know, the Daily has gone down the path of making what I think is a very courageous bet to say, we're going to just do something on the iPad. We're not going to do anything with paper. You know, in fact, you know what the number one expense is for most of these publications? It's gasoline. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just shipping the these. Delivery yeah, and, yeah. It's the number one expense. Yeah. And like number two expense for like, uh, you know, the large newspapers is trucks and yeah. truck maintenance, right? Yeah. If you've ever driven past the New York Times uh, on, yeah. uh, you know, in New York, it, you know the printing facility. It mm. just, it, it's massive. The parking lot alone is like it's the a, size. It's just like, of isn't it just like classic innovators dilemma though? Like it's so hard to give up with this on a yeah. cash cow business. It is. Like, it's a very even though everyone problem. knows it's going yeah. away, but yeah. like it's making all this money. Yeah. You know? So it's like, yeah. how do you do it? Yeah. Um, no, I know. It, and some won't survive, and some will, and then there'll be new players that will come into the market. So we are going through a tremendous transformation, but. But I think that, like for example, just look at the New Yorker. What they just did uh, with you know Apple is like now figured out a way to have a um, a better subscription model that enables people who are already print subscribers to get the iPad version for free, mm -hmm. right? So just that simple step, you know, makes the whole experience better. And you know we've got to get to the point where magazine uh, content are downloaded in the background. They aren't so heavy weight. They're more yeah. real time. Um, they're not seen as separate apps. That's another big issue. Like, who wants to download an app to read one publication, yeah, yeah. right? Um, also, there's a lot of atomization that's going to be happening with content, right? So it's not only about the bundled form of premium content, right? That's one form that people will get their magazine in, for example. But then other, other forms uh, are, you know, the atomization of this content. And you'll get lots of different articles from lots of different sources. And then uh, hopefully, you know, you might find a source that you think is really great and you could decide to become a subscriber to that and get the bundled stuff as well. But isn't the atomization make it, I mean, isn't it sort of like this historical accident that the classified ads supported foreign policy journalism, right? I mean, like, and foreign right. policy journalism on its own probably couldn't right. be a sustainable business model. Yes. And I, like, I worry yes. as a citizen, let's say, that like yeah. things like investigative journalism, foreign reporting, once things are atomized, like you can't have sort of this cross subsidization going on. I think that's a. I think that's an excellent point. Um, and uh, you know, there's still many open questions as respects in, with respect to the business model and how really great content gets um, uh, you know funded. And um, you know, I think that you know what I'm hopeful of is that on the web, you know, we're going to move away from this banner advertising model, which you know banners impact the content themselves. They cause people to want to do unnatural things to present the content. So for example, a long form piece of journalism will be spread out over six or seven page views and you have to hit next page yeah, and then yeah. and it reloads. And you know, you know, every time there's that latent that latency in loading to a next page, you lose readers. And you know, I, I, I bet you the number of people who actually get to the end of one of those articles is very, very low. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and meanwhile, you know, People are pushing the management of these companies to like drive 25% more revenue. And so, you know, they're just doing whatever they can to basically sort of, you know, eke out whatever they can with what they have now. I think that what's happened with the iPad, though, has been transformative because now people are taking a huge step back and saying, wait, 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 let's stop the madness here. 
And let's think about, you know, we do have great content. We do have amazing writers. And, you know, if we could just get the same economics for advertising um, that we do in print online, that would, that would solve most of our problems. We wouldn't even need a paywall. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, the whole you know, element of subscribing you know, to content is way simpler when you can just push one button and now you can buy an article or a week's worth of you know, a publication or you can subscribe to a year. So the barrier to doing that is much lower. And we know that like, you know, people happily buy you know, $4.95 a time, you know, issue of time in, or The Economist in the train station or at the airport, mm-hmm. no problem, right? So, so how can we replicate that? Um, yeah, I think also like what, what <clears throat> Apple did was they reset, you know, everyone's so used to getting content for free. They kind of reset expectations. Suddenly people were used to pay, started paying for content again, like, yes. right? Just psychologically, it was a different, yes. like it was a different kind of like, yeah. you didn't expect things, everything to be for free on the, on the iPhone and the iPad. And exactly. it feels like that's a huge opportunity, right? Yes, it is. It is. And when the content is beautifully rendered, it has to be, and it loads instantly, and it, and it feels more like that kind of print experience that people yeah. know and love, then I think it's going to, I, 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 like I said, I'm an optimistic uh, thinker on this. I think this is going to be a big deal. There's still many steps to go, um, but I do believe that. that and so your goal is to a, sort of be, you said there, sh- there should be one app, and your goal is to kind of be that app? Well, our goal is to be a player in the space. Um, so the way I think about ourselves is you've got the high-end premium bundled content from, uh, let's say, The New Yorker or Wired magazine. And then meanwhile, they have the website, which has like a lot of sort of real-time bloggy kind of stuff, as well as samples or, you know, full articles from their premium stuff that's sort of mixed in. Um, And you may have some community-built content there, et cetera. And then so we serve as sort of the connector in between. We we make it easy for people to discover content, to share content, uh, and then to browse that content in a a magazine-like format, even though it might be stuff that's written in a blog you know, on the website, we can make it look and feel like the pages of Wired Magazine, and then we can help them sell full-page print-style advertising against that that is um, many times more valuable than banner ads. And you don't have the ads then competing for the screen real estate with the content and blinking at you and stuff, and yeah. you have a far better experience. And you also set it up so our, one of the things our platform does really nicely is all the content's just right there. You really don't wait for anything to download. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like it's almost like an accelerated version of the web. Um, we strip out all the stuff that nobody li- really likes about the web, all the navigation toolbars, all the sidebars, all the, you know, and then we, we let them reinsert, we let the publisher reinsert the good stuff like, you know, typography, beautiful photographs, you know, uh, at, at full screen resolution, and then really beautiful advertising. Um, so that that it's, 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 you could almost think of it as a more curated, more optimized, accelerated version of the web. Yeah, interesting. Um, well, I think that we're out of time, but thanks so much for being here. My and, pleasure. Uh, it was great to talk yeah, to you. Great talking to you. Thanks. Thank you.